Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. On behalf of ITU, welcome to this fourth and final dialogue in the Road to Burn via Geneva series. Let me take a moment to thank Jean-Pierre Raymond and his colleagues at the Swiss Mission to the UN and the Geneva Internet Platform for organizing this very stimulating series of dialogues ahead of the UN World Data Forum next week. It's now October, and we're almost at the end of the first year of our decade of action, with just a little over nine years left to deliver on the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. With progress lagging on almost every goal, we urgently need to find new ideas and approaches that can dramatically accelerate solutions to the world's biggest problems. At ITU, we have long advocated for the catalytic role of digital technologies in accelerating sustainable development. And I'm most encouraged to see that our message is now being heard around the world with the release of the UN Secretary General's Digital Cooperation Roadmap, with the strong focus on digital at this year's UN General Assembly debates, and with COVID-19 throwing the spotlight on what it means to be unconnected in the digital age. The pandemic has illustrated, as perhaps nothing else could have, the vital importance of meaningful connectivity to people's livelihoods, employment, health and well being, education, and social participation. It has also served as a wake up call to the global community to renew efforts to connect the 3.6 billion people still offline. We have never faced a situation of greater urgency, and I believe global recognition of the vital importance of digital infrastructure, services and skills offers us an unprecedented opportunity to make real and rapid progress. The Secretary General's roadmap makes it clear that if we truly want to achieve the SDGs, the global community needs to mobilize, to energize, and to find ways to collaborate more closely and more productively. As the main operational hub of the UN and the multilateral system, I believe Geneva's unique international ecosystem can contribute substantially to identifying and fulfilling some of the most pressing demands of the 2030 Agenda. As an input into the World Data Forum, the focus of this series of dialogues has been on digital and data cooperation. The first three dialogues discussed data collection, the protection and privacy of data, and the sharing of data. This last dialogue will deal with the use of data and in particular, the use of big data. Our discussions today will focus around three core questions. What type of cognitive, technical, and analytical skills are needed for the effective use and communication of big data? How can we make the rather abstract results of big data analysis more tangible through data visualization and storytelling? How can big data be used more effectively for evidence-based policymaking, especially in developing countries? These are all crucial questions. Extracting value from big data is a complex activity and if we are not using the results effectively, all our efforts go to waste. It is very important that data, all types of data, are made accessible and available to inform the policymaking process, while of course, always respecting principles of data protection and privacy. Let me share with you ITU's experience with the project on big data for measuring the information society. Through this project, we've been exploring ways of using big data from the ICT sector to improve and complement existing statistics and methodologies used to measure the information society. The goal of this big data project is to enhance the accuracy, granularity, 
and timeliness of ITU's ICT statistics, which are entrusted and relied upon, not just by our sister agencies, including the World Bank and IMF, but by governments worldwide and by the ICT global industry. In this project, which has been piloted in eight countries to date, ITU collaborates with national regulators, with mobile network operators, and internet service providers to leverage massive amounts of user data. In implementing the project, we've already identified a number of challenges. First, accessing mobile phone data in most countries requires clearance from the organization in charge of data privacy to ensure that the privacy of mobile phone users is protected. This requires non-disclosure agreements to be signed by operators, regulators, and data scientists before data can be accessed. This is a lengthy process, usually taking at least six months. The second challenge relates to the infrastructure and hardware resources that are needed to extract and process large amounts of raw data. Regardless of whether data extraction and processing is handled by the ministry, the regulator, or the National Statistical Office, most countries, and particularly developing countries, simply do not have the necessary infrastructure to handle such large data volumes. These two challenges have already been touched on in the previous dialogues, but a third challenge that has not yet been mentioned and which is directly relevant to today's dialogue is that extracting useful information from very large amounts of data is complex and requires specific skills. Big data is a relatively new field and expert big data scientists are scarce, especially in developing countries. For the same reason, policymakers frequently fail to understand the potential and the value of big data which represents a further challenge when it comes to securing government buy-in. Visualizing big data through compelling stories is an important tool in promoting insights into our results so that policymakers understand the information that the data yields and are then able to effectively use that information in their decision-making processes. At the ITU, we have already begun this journey and we're working hard to make our data as useful and as revealing as possible for analysts, policymakers, and the industry that we serve. Next month, we will launch the 2020 edition of our ICT Facts and Figures publication as part of our Measuring Digital Development series. I highly recommend everyone with an interest in the potential of big data to drive development outcomes to take a look at it when it comes out. This publication offers a very good example of what I've been talking about in terms of visualizing data in an impactful and meaningful way. Before concluding, let me just take a minute to thank our co-host, the World Economic Forum, and in particular, Dominique Warre and his team. The WEF is a pioneer and a champion of multi-stakeholder collaboration and a frequent and valued collaborator of the ITU in advocating for digital technologies as catalysts of sustainable development. It is an incubator for innovative initiatives such as Vision 2030 and a supporter of several initiatives that the ITU cares deeply about, including the Equals Global Partnership and the Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development. In closing, I wish you a very successful session today and my best wishes for a stimulating and productive virtual UN World Data Forum next week. I'm very pleased to confirm that the ITU Secretary General Hu Lin Zhao will participate in that important meeting and from my own part, I hope very much to have the chance to meet you all in Bern next year for the 2021 edition of the forum. Thank you very much.